Thank you, Sam. Good day, everyone. Thanks for joining us. We're going to talk about this new FinCEN currency transaction report. Uh, one of the things I've heard regulators say over and over again is the most frequent violation that they find during BSA examinations is that the currency transaction reports are completed incorrectly. Uh, that's what we're going to work on. That's exactly what it is that we want to avoid. Uh, Sam has mentioned the fact that there are uh, written materials in support of the program. Well, one of the decisions that I made, and we'll chat about it in just a little bit, was to make sure that you were looking at the original source documents. In other words, you have primary resources to look over during this presentation. I, I think that's the place to start with the new currency transaction report and with the new suspicious activity report as well. Uh, first of all, let's kind of set the stage. Um, currently, uh, the FinCEN CTR, the report, only exists in electronic format. There are no more paper forms. There will be no more paper forms. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, FinCEN went back and edited the instructions to make sure that they used the term report uh, wherever uh, the appropriate term was going to appear. Uh, they want to make sure that we all understand that this is not a form anymore. It is an electronic data collection device. That's their terminology. And frankly, the more you study this document, uh, the more clear that becomes. Uh, they have organized it to look like a form. But that's just uh, for the psychological impact on you and me. It is really nothing more than typing information into boxes and pushing submit so that information will end up in their database. Uh, one, just a, a little footnote. Uh, take a look at your policies and procedures and make sure that you are referring to this document as uh, the FinCEN CTR. It no longer carries a form number. It is not a form, as I already mentioned. So make sure that you've converted. Uh, your internal documentation to match their thought processes. Now, in terms of electronic filing, many banks have been electronic filing for years. Obviously, in order to do that, uh, you're going to have to register to do electronic filing. But everybody's already done that, so I'm not going to uh, go into that in any sort of detail whatsoever. What I want to do is to talk about another resource, and that is the user test system. Uh, I still run into, to be candid, uh, the majority of bankers who are just not familiar with this website. Now, I have depicted a screenshot from the home page from the user test system, and on the next slide, uh, I'm going to show you the URL. If you want to instead go to the FinCEN website and just search for it, just type in user test system. It will take you to the announcement where they published it, and you can click on through. But it will be the screen that you're looking at right now. Uh, this was something that FinCEN put out a long time ago to help banks get accustomed to the new report. Uh, on this user test system, uh, there in the upper right-hand corner, you can see what are clearly some links. Uh, there's a link to the new currency transaction report, the subject of our discussion today. But there's also a link to the new suspicious activity report and the designation of exempt person form. Now, uh, these are actually demonstration forms. Uh, they actually work. And, uh, in other words, if I want to get familiar with the mechanics of the currency transaction report, I can go to this user test system. Again, I've got the URL on the screen right now. I can go to the user test system, go to the upper right-hand corner, click on Currency Transaction Report, and it will open uh, an active, fully functional currency transaction report. Now, that means I don't have to go to the e-filing system in order to see the form. And if I'm curious about uh, somebody told me once that the, the form is dynamic, that if you put in an entry, uh, it can actually change the fields on the form. If I'm curious about how that would work, I can go to the demonstration report and actually see that if I click, for example, entity uh, as one of the boxes, it's going to grayscale certain portions of the form. This is an excellent tool. I encourage
encourage you to use it. Uh, I encourage you to use it to help familiarize your employees with the currency transaction report. So on the user test system, we have links to a fully functional demonstration copy of the report. We also have a link to the current instructions for the report. Now, the instructions have been sort of a moving target, and I'll talk about that in just a little bit. But uh, in essence, uh, you have printed out in front of you a copy of the current version of the instructions. If you wanted to locate that on the FinCEN website, there's a couple places where you could find it, but I think the easiest place is on the user test system itself. Uh, another resource that's on the FinCEN website is a webinar that was put on in uh, October of last year. It was about the currency transaction report and the designation of exempt person form. It is still there. Now, it's not just the slides. It is the recording as well. Uh, I would point out to you that it is uh, training materials, definitely available from the ultimate source, FinCEN, and it would be free to your institution. I encourage you to spend the time necessary to uh, go through that. Also consider, uh, should your employees uh, see that FinCEN presentation? Uh, me personally, what I want to encourage you to take a look at in that presentation is the Q&A section of the webinar. They address several issues on the currency transaction report that frankly were very helpful. Uh, they had Q's and A's, but believe me, they weren't working off audience Q's and A's. Uh, they were working off the questions that their people had already received about the new currency transaction report. And there are some good Q's and A's in that webinar. So if you don't want to watch the whole thing, just open the uh, link to the seminar, or excuse me, webinar materials and go to the end and page through the Q&A section. Now, in terms of resources, here's what you have in front of you. All of these documents were bound into a single PDF file because they are, as I said, the original sources. They're not secondary documents. They're all from FinCEN. Uh, the first one was uh, the FinCEN announcement 2012-G002. And, and frankly, I believe it is the first one that is filed in your material. It came out in March of last year. Um, in my opinion, it was the most critical announcement that FinCEN made in 2012. Now, it's not just about the currency transaction report. It's about the CTR. It's about the suspicious activity report. And there are some generalities about electronic filing in general. Uh, the next resource, which, again, you have a copy of, the uh, FinCEN guidance, uh, I believe, is on pages one through four. It's individually paginated. And then following that is a great resource uh, that begins, it's also individually paginated, the FinCEN CTR FAQ, or Frequently Asked Questions. Uh, please note the date there. This just came out a couple months ago. It is as described. These are the questions that FinCEN has gotten so often they don't really want to answer them anymore on the helpline, or excuse me, they want to make it more efficient for you and me. So they're going ahead and answering those questions uh, in the form of this FAQ. So this is a good resource. I encourage you to use it. Uh, the last one is the instructions to the currency transaction report as well. Uh, it follows uh, the FinCEN CTR FAQ, uh, but it actually begins on its own page number 47. So I didn't give you all the instructions for the CTR because a lot of it is not relevant to us in the conversation we're going to have. I started with what is referred to as attachment C to the CTR instructions. But what I really want to draw to your attention, it's on the slide right now, um, but it's also on the first page of the instructions, is the revision date, or what they refer to as the release date. Uh, these instructions were updated just last month. Now, that makes them a critical resource 